meeting in order, uh, we'll have a pledge and a moment of silence. question about a school board association payment of uh, over $9,000. Uh, so all right with everybody else, we'll pull that until we get further clarification. That's so, and Mr. Kistler and I will call tomorrow on the difference between the different versions and why it was changed. So. <coughs> uh, were there any questions about any of the other claims? Not on the motion to approve? So moved. Sandy? Second. Second by Jenny. Any other discussion? I'm clear, writing. Okay, motion we'll carries 7 2. Uh, payrolls, everybody have a chance to look those over. Okay, any questions on that? I didn't know we had too many people. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. Okay. We have a lot of great people. Uh, motion to approve payrolls. Motion. Second. Second, Ms. Andy. Any other discussion? All in favor? Motion carried. Seven zero. Okay. The uh, fund reports I on the uh, this month for the education fund and the operations fund. I uh, went back and the amount of the transfers I listed those at the bottom, so they were there for reference. Um, the education fund in February we had receipts of one million. $16,950.67 and monthly expenses of $915,034.66. I left us with a cash balance of $597,805.57. The debt service fund, uh, monthly receipts of $6,451.71. There were no expenditures in February and our cash balance in the debt service fund is $1,000,000. $901,111.43. In the operations fund, uh, we had receipts of $28,841.55. Uh, Monthly expenses of $272,468.82, which leaves our cash balance at $1,965,936.55. Any questions? Motion to approve the funds is read. On motion to approve the funds. Okay, motion to file. Second. Second by Jenny. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay, motion to carry. Uh, the minutes of the uh, February 18th regular board meeting. Any additions or corrections? Minutes of the study session. Uh, I did notice the date should be March 4th instead of February 4th. Any other additions or corrections? If not, a new motion to approve the consent items as minutes. I move we approve the um, minutes with, as corrected with the date on the study session. I second that motion. Okay, motion with Jenny, second by Rick. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay, motion carries. Second. Okay, uh, your action items. Approval to sell iPads from special services and two additional MacBooks. Um, I think 
think that Scott will share, I know that these are coming from special education and so we will need to keep these separate because these funds, once these items are sold, will go back into the special education fund. They were purchased with those monies and so we need to make sure that they go back into that fund. Scott, I don't know if you want to kind of talk them through. These are older devices that right. we have. Um, the iPads, the 52 <laughs> iPads that we had for, uh, some of them were in like the special ed classrooms um, that we had and we just had collected over and we did not sell them when we sold the old uh, the iPads with the rest of the corporation. Um, and we recently got new iPads so that we were able to replace the, these older ones. So this is why we have a little uh, surplus of these extra iPads. Um, as you can see, the first uh, the 52 iPads are for 20 bucks. Um, they are the older model, uh, like the generation three, four, down to the like one, two. Uh, there's probably a mix and match, but we found that they're only about worth 20 bucks. Uh, we do have 18 of the iPad Airs that we had, a few that we kept left over from, from the sale before that we thought we might use, but we ended up not really using them. Um, so we have 18 of those um, uh, that, we will, that we can sell for 70 bucks each. Uh, we also had uh, two MacBooks uh, that were in with the, um, that are the older models, the 2014 models of MacBooks that were with a, a special ed, a couple of special ed teachers, and we will be updating them, giving them a new, a newer version, so everybody will be on pretty much the, uh, the newer MacBooks. So I, our, our um, intent would be to put those two MacBooks into the overall MacBook cell that we uh, introduced last month in that uh, series of cells. They go to students and then employees and then to the to the district taxpayer. But all of the iPads, we would just open up to the district taxpayer cell at that point in time. Anybody have any questions? Okay, and motion to, uh, to approve the selling the additional iPads and the, and the uh, MacBooks. Give the option. So moved. Motion to make a second. Second, Stacy. Any other discussion? All in favor? Okay, most curious. Sale Middle School Gymnasium. So as we get ready to begin the construction in the gymnasium, there are items in there that we elected uh, with the maintenance <coughs> crew to take down and be responsible for to try to help offset the cost. Um, it was going to be cheaper for us to do that than to put that out as part of the contract. But I know they're getting ready to start work in the gym and so we need to make sure that we're diligent about getting that out in a timely manner. So we would propose that the scoreboards be auctioned. Um, the bleachers, they did not pass the last, uh, at least one inspection possibly, yeah, the last inspection. Um, and so we are hesitant to, to, to uh, do anything with those other than to scrap those. The backboards, we invited Tom in today, I don't know, if, there, if you believe that there's some interest in trying to auction those, we can most certainly do that. Uh, the gym curtain is uh, beyond what we're comfortable doing, and then uh, many of the other items, the value would be in the scrapping those and saving the parts and pieces that we believe we may be able to utilize moving forward. But this was a good faith endeavor to try to reduce the contractual cost in that. We just need permission to begin that process. And I believe that backboards could sell. I mean, okay. Yeah. Then, so Okay. So we would <laughs> we would propose that, <clears throat> that the scoreboards be auctioned and the backboards be auctioned as well. Uh, our being able to take what we believe will be used from the HVAC units, keeping those in storage here, and then scrapping them as we break those down. Is the lumber that's on the bleachers is that worth anything? I think that. Yeah, that's that's a problem. Uh, we're looking at that uh, red morning. In order to scrap that, you got to take all the wood off the metal. They won't accept it like yeah. that. And every board on there has about 10 bolts on it, and there's a lot of boards. So that all has to be removed. But it, it, once you get it off, it's good lumber. Mm -hmm. uh, nice piece of value there. So I'll option that as well. Uh, you can okay. try it, I guess. My woodworkers around. Yeah. Okay. So that, so we would auction this, just so that I have this clearly and Scott and I can work on this, we would auction the scoreboards 
We would um, auction the backboards. We would auction uh, the, the wood from the bleachers after we scrapped the metal portions of that. Um, and then the rest we would scrap according to the plan. And the other scrap metal would be the uh, mountings for all the goals. You know, can the ceiling. We're going to pull off the uh, uh, reduction drive winches that are on them and set them on the shelf, possibly use them if they need for another gym. Uh, but as far as the rest, uh, not going to be able to use for these scrap metal. So, any other questions? Okay, we'll need a uh, motion to approve the sale. Pardon? I'll make a motion. Okay. Joe? I'll second. And second by Jenny. And our discussion. All in favor? Okay, most carry the same I haven't told the administrative team that's what we're doing over break. Save some money. Oh well. Oh well, we'll work to the <laughs> Son Ho Lee, representing the Rochester Rotary Club, $300 for the school bus camera project. Northern Indiana Community Foundation will donate $409.50 to each library at Rochester Middle and Rochester High School from the Jennifer Kingery Obermeyer Memorial Fund. Uh, Steve and Lois Rands and their daughters, Tanya, Jenny, and Bridget, $2,400 for a school bus camera arm. Project. Then uh, we have a mini grant of $250 uh, to Dan Bailey's success program, and that comes from the Inspire 3 grant, which is part of the Lily Endowment. And that gets all the grant. Correct. As I look at candy, but yeah, I don't know if I'm I believe we're good. Okay. I need a motion to approve the donations. So moved. Did you read them? There were, we had one today for stock on cameras. Did we not get it? So the one from the Ramses? Yeah. Yeah, really. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed it was just added today. Okay. Uh, motion? I'm Sandy? Okay. I'll second that. I'll second that, Stacy. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay, motion carries. Once again, I want to uh, thank everybody for the donations. Uh, and I, I'm glad to see that you know the school bus arm project is still alive, and uh, people are donating to bring awareness to uh, the problem we have out here with the cars passing the buses. And that's kind of the whole idea behind the thing is to bring awareness, so you know they realize when they see that bus that uh, well, they're going to be recorded if they pass it. So uh, thanks to all the donors today. Okay, we have an overnight field trip. FFA soil judging. I think that Mr. Kiesling will speak on behalf of both of the FFA overnight field trips that are coming up. Yeah, we have a couple of them. Uh, one at the state convention down uh, at Purdue University, the music hall. And those involve really kind of cross section of the whole program. A uh, chance for the young kids to see kids, all the kids get awards and see how that works out. Chapter degrees and state degrees. <coughs> Been there a few times myself with my own kids, and it's always a neat experience for the kids. And, and uh, so I, he has a range right now, 10 to 25 students uh, going, and that's uh, a little later on in June. Um, then the other one, of course, is Oklahoma City with the uh, soil judging team. And uh, so he has eight going there. I think Mr. Brightenhold is a I go along uh, as a parent and a chaperone uh, to help with those eight kids. Um, and so all of them are just going to be neat experiences for the kids. Uh, Mr. Pearson does a good job ever since I've been here. He's well organized with the field trips and very informative and good follow up. And, uh, kids really good. And, uh, you know. um, I just had happened to. Uh, uh, this reminds me of my, my uh, daughter during FFA week, who was involved in FFA herself. She's 31 now, <laughs> two children, and she teaches down at Jasper. But uh, 
Uh, she just made a comment. She said, see the track we parked at the high school this morning got me thinking of being nostalgic. And she said, uh, FFA is such a, a great experience for kids. It teaches leadership. And she got her first exposure to public speaking. Uh, which these kids will get to witness at the state uh, uh, convention. And uh, she said it really brought her out of her shell. She was about as quiet and much as a, a, a flower on the wall as you can imagine a young lady to be at that time. I never would have ever dreamed she would go into education as a teacher. Uh, she really attributes that experience to, to allow her to get comfortable speaking to people and thinking on her feet and leadership activities. So these are both two very good event, uh, uh, events for the kids. Well said, and I would echo that. Through my years of experience in Epic Bay, and, and I had the opportunity to go to the National Soil Judging Contest, and that was quite an experience. Uh, one of the first things we had to learn was, you know, the red soil out there, yeah. you know, the red or red clay. We never see that in the end. Yeah. So it was a different experience, and it was a uh, very worthwhile and learning experience. So, anybody else have any questions? Does anybody ever come to see our muck? Does anybody ever come to see our muck? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do have variety of whole counties. <laughs> Okay, we need a motion to approve the uh, two FFA field trips. What's the motion made? Okay, motion by Second. Second by Joe. Any other discussion? All in Right? Any motion carries in there. Thank you. Okay. Approval of the current non contractual salaries. In the past, um, the board approved <coughs> the pipeline that uh, we spent a great deal of time, I believe. That was a few years ago. Um, we went through the pipeline and adjusted that, and and went through that process. Uh, what the, what we learned from the auditors is they would like to see names attached to those pipeline categories so that they know that they're properly placed in the pipeline and that their job descriptions match what they're being paid. And so this is uh, one of those um, I'm not going to say suggestions, but one of those uh, formalities that came out of our most recent audit. So. We're just asking that we go through the pipeline that already been um, approved by the board. This is matching those names so that uh, the auditors know that we uh, appropriately place them on the pipeline. And then moving forward, when we bring recommendations to you, they will also, uh, per auditors, have the salary or per hourly rate uh, attached to those as well so that we're compliant moving forward. Anybody have a chance to look them over? Any questions? I have a question. Huh? The person's listed twice. <clears throat> How do, I mean, are they being paid two different rates depending on what they're doing during the day? Yes, yeah, so we have uh, some employees who will run a bus route in the morning and then serve as an IA and then go back out. Sometimes we also have employees who serve as like a special needs IA for a portion of the day based on their IEP, but the rest of the afternoon they may be in a general classroom. So we need to make sure that we're coding them properly, pulling from the right either grants or funds report and making sure that it matches. So we have a small handful that serve in various roles. And I'm assuming then that there's this all fits within the pipeline that was previously yes, absolutely. There's no change. No, absolutely. Any other questions? If not, I'll make a motion to approve. So moved. Okay, Sandy. I'll second. Second by Jenny. Any other discussion? All in favor? Okay, most carry second. Personnel report. Resignation. Carla Hogg Collin resigns as varsity softball coach. FMLA. Addie Paris, Corporation Compliance Coordinator, intermittently. A retirement, Lena Tucker, RHS Head Zone Technician, uh, projected August 2nd, 2019. Reassignment, Brian Stockberger, currently grounds maintenance specialist to be reassigned to RHS Head Zone Tech. It's a lateral move, no change in rate of pay. Hiring recommendation, Don Howard, Special Needs Instructional Assistant for Columbia's Life Skills class. Pay rate of $9.47 per hour. Athletic coaching recommendations. David Musselman, varsity softball coach. Pay rate of $4,250. Uh, 
Kelly McCall, middle school track assistant coach, pay rate $950. Athletic volunteer coaches for spring sports, no pay. Uh, baseball, Fred McLaughlin, Jeff Hines, Mark Hines, Joey Rock, track, Megan Heil, and summer reading recommendation, Kenzie Collins, Columbia Summer Reading Program Director, pay rate of $1,500. Are there any additions? I think Megan Hyde was supposed to be Megan Hyde. That's kind of what I thought. Yeah. person for that particular building. And so um, Brad Carter wants to, uh, obviously Brian has a lot of knowledge working out on the grounds. He's one that uh, does a lot with marking the football field and does some of those specialty items out and about on the grounds. And so the purpose of trying to do this is uh, being able to train him with Dana while Dana's still here and then we'll be um, posting for Brian's replacement in the hope that there will be some time uh, in between that we can be training both simultaneously at different points depending on the specialties that are going on in the district so that we don't see any uh, uh, lack or so we don't skip a beat, I guess, moving <coughs> forward in those areas. Okay. And motion to approve the personnel report. I think Jeff Hines is Jeff Hines as well. I said too. I don't know if that makes a difference or not. Does anybody know? Jeff, there's Jeff Hines and, and Mark Hines. I think they're both Hines. Yeah. With a Y with an yes. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that correction that correction? They brothers? I think father's son. They come from the Warsaw area. Good folks. Do you have that kind of person going We will make sure we get a ride. So if parents have questions, please reach out to those individual buildings. Um, we'll have remediation going on during that time. I want to thank uh, Sabrina and Todd and Brenda and Pat for helping while Julie's been gone picking up those pieces. We've kind of all taken on a little bit of uh, extra there in the office while she's been out. So I appreciate all of their help and support. And hope everybody has a safe and peaceful, restful spring break. You don't want to <laughs> no, no. Um, the other thing is, and we've been announcing and communicating this out, and I feel like we need to continue to do that. We, um, our two makeup days will be May uh, 28th and May 29th. That will conclude our academic year. Won't interfere with graduation, but we want to make sure that we're publishing those dates and communicating those out as well. So, um, hoping for no more inclement weather, the 28th and 29th. Uh, we'll conclude our academic year for this year. Yeah. What's that? It's Indiana. It's Indiana. Yeah. <laughs> there was a time where we missed two days after spring break due to ice, so we'll, uh, we won't talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> and there have been times we've missed nothing. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 But other than that, thank you. Okay, uh, any comments from the board? Questions? I just want to take a chance to thank Luke and his team. Um, the Riddle had a drama club for the first time this past year, and um, he had several staff members take that on, one of whom is also taking on the high school drama, so she, she bit off a lot this year. And they had the first performance last week, 
it went really well. Those kids worked hard. The staff worked hard. They were all enthusiastic, and it's just really encouraging to see that. And a little plug that the high school play is the April 12th and 13th. So. It was wonderful. <clears throat> I was so glad to see that. I suggested that maybe the middle school should do a drama club too. Because if they get into it, it's really, and then they have to wait through the years, you know. Not maybe, sure really anything else maybe, maybe the next performance will be on the least thing to your staff. Yes. Credit, credit to those teachers and Mrs. Piercy, Mrs. Todd, and Mrs. Riggie were involved in that. All the credit goes to that man and the kids. It, it truly was amazing. I know from me, some of those kids seem awfully shy in the building, and then for them to, you know, do that on stage was amazing. To only totally see them in a, a different light and to be able to congratulate them the next day and see the smiles on their faces as well was, was pretty neat. So definitely kudos to the drama club department. That was, that was really neat. That was there. They did a good job. Looked like they're having fun too. Mm -hmm. Some of us were really on it. <laughs> the big bad wolf. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where it is. Overly dramatic. <laughs> but no, it's cool when kids get to have an opportunity to do something that they're really passionate about. And then we have people say that. Okay, uh, any comments from the audience? If not, we'll adjourn the meeting. Thanks for coming. Okay.